Hello and welcome to sim.bc where it right now is 0043 in the, well, in the middle of the night again. Just for the record, I'm not Italian if you thought so. Don't understand why you would get that idea from. No, but I was actually asked a while back, they were like, are you Italian mate? And I was like, no, why did you get that from? They were like, your shirt mate? And I was like, oh, this shirt? Oh, yeah, okay, I get you. Because, yeah, I just... You know, just souvenir, you know, just the souvenir. Now, I'm just gonna say for the records, look at this! Yeah, right? No, probably here. Yeah, yeah, here it is. New thing added, and this is, you know, if you want to skip my bullcraps, let's say, my bullshit, all the things I go through when I just give you about a bit of a review, right? About me life, about the th certain things I've done so far, about, you know, me random facts, it's just concerned about me. You can now skip that and go direct, damn it, and go directly. <laughs> to the topic at hand so to say I thought I would implement that that it would be pretty nice to have actually just gonna mention you know in the beginning that there were some people saying that or rather there was some symptoms showing that migraine if it now is migraine that I'm having is steaming from you know bright lights so if I'm having a bit of a bright light now because I'm using me light as I'm you know solved the lighting problem with the light bulb and all of that what what's that Craig Nobody cares? Okay, okay. Well, but that's not why you're here. You're not here to hear about me lighting problems. You're not here about me telling you that if you see, look out over the ocean, you can see some glittering sparks and that can actually trigger migraines, so, at least so I've heard. You're not here to know that I've been deep diving into some rather interesting news, actually, of the latest that we're going to talk about on Saturday, all about the HMN is HMN, HM, you know, it's a Swedish company. I can't even pronounce the name. All about them H&M company and about you know casual racism so to say that some people state we're gonna see if I agree with that well I can't see why not but you know there is some twists we can make on that that we're gonna discuss on Saturday day gonna be all good mates gonna be all fine but yeah we're here to talk about not the smash no no we're actually keeping the smash for tomorrow mates because today we're going to go through as we went through yesterday some you know underlying assumptions we went through some fundamental things just moved me around there in order to actually get in and discuss it in a good way so to say in a reasonable manner that we can actually utilize now, oops i forgot me time there uh, so now today we're going to go through some extra terms that we need to go through and some things that we need to pass by in order to actually understand the discussion that we're going to make tomorrow. So what are these? Well, he has mentioned them quietly or quickly. It's whales. What are whales? Subscription base. Is that good? DLC or a new game? What do you choose? And free to play allows for new entries and stuff like that. But without any further ado, mates, as I said, let's start from the beginning. And we, let's start with whales. Now, what is whales? Hmm, quite interesting. Why? What is whales? Well, whales are big fish in the ocean. For those of you who don't know, whales also exist in the gaming world. Since we're, you know, talking about gaming, starting with clothing, gambling, gaming, <gasps> we're so off from business, am I right? now? but this is actually about business as well. Because these whales are the thing that actually supports the business model. Mention it, you know, quietly for a few days ago. But they're basically the people who are supporting the microtransaction model. And how, you may ask? Well... Every, let's say, 10th, no, that's probably not even that, 10th, 20th, 50th, 100th, maybe even a thousand player that's playing a game is a whale. And the whale is someone who is spending so ludicrously much amounts of money on loot boxes, on in-game transactions, on cosmetics, on upgrades. They basically is throwing, they're taking up their wallet and they're taking out all the cash, making them, you know, small airplanes, throwing it into the TV and say, make me better without me having to play the game. You know, pay, favor playing for paying or whatever. They're actually on the paying side, so to say. But these people, even though they're not many in comparison to, you know, the majority of players, there's still many enough to make the devs realize that these people are spending so much money that they're covering all of the bases, right? Covering all the other people who doesn't spend money which makes people see you know the people in charge so to say the people actually designing the games the developers the devs they can just look at all the in-game in-game trans micro micro uh, in-game micro transactions and they can see well oh it's going up it's going up the whales have come it's the whale song yeah and how does it go well it goes ka-ching 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 and that's basically the whales coming in now why is that important well because this is a clear you know 
a clear person or a clear example of some people who are actually favoring paying over actually playing the game. Or they might say that, well, I bought the game or just enter it for free to play and now I want to get to the maximum top that I can before I actually invest any time in it. And you know, these are people that I said favoring paying over playing. That's the terminology that we need to get straight in order to actually discuss it tomorrow because those are, you know, on one side. I'm not going to mention which, but you know, you know, the people are throwing money at screen. Wonder which side they're going to be on, even though I actually mentioned it. The next thing is maybe subscription is better for multiplayer because as we discussed two days ago, I was saying, you know, when it comes to free to play, you have microtransactions and when you come to your single player games, you buy the game and then you play the game. You have free to play single player games as well, but there was this entire day of free to play and buying the game in order to play, but then we also thought that, well, if there's multiplayer, what do you do then? Do you have microtransactions in order to sustain the server? Do you have just buying the game and that should be enough, like Guild Wars 2, you know, you buy to play the game, then you be buy expansion packs on top of that, or do you use a free-to-play model and you say, well, we have microtransactions, in-game microtransactions like in Swator's Star Wars Online, The Old Republic, something like that. Um, I can't actually quite remember the name on the top of my head, but they're having in-game microtransactions in a way, they have them a subscription base as well as I understand it, but they do have a microtransaction as well in order to keep the service alive. But then you come to the problem that when you don't, when you look at multiplayer games that are not on the PC, you know, hashtag PC Master Race and all that, you're looking at PlayStation, you're looking at Xbox, you're looking at the new Nintendo Switch, and you're saying, well, if we're implementing a subscription base here, because that's good for the company, right? It's good for the game, it's good for the server time. It's something that will continuously make a revenue stream. It's coming into the company and it will go forever. It's amazing as long as we're actually producing content than maintaining the service in a good way so that people actually want to keep on playing the game. The only problem here is, as I said, when it comes to consoles, because then you're looking at things like PlayStation Network, the Xbox Live, and the online feature for the Nintendo Switch, and you're basically saying, well, I want you to pay about a special amount for this game, then I want you to pay a subscription on this game as well. And they're like, okay, cool, let's find an Andy. Or let's say, uh, download it, then pay a subscription base. And they're like, okay, fine, cool, let's all Andy. But then PlayStation, Xbox, and Nintendo is going to their consumers and saying, ha, mate, you want to access the internet? And they're like, yes, I want to. I want to play the game. I bought this game. I bought the subscription and all. Can I play the game? And they're like, <laughs> no, you have to have a subscription over us because we need to maintain our servers, you know, so that you can actually can use your console to begin with in order to access the game on which you already bought the subscription. So you need to have a bit of a double subscription there. So you're actually penalizing your consumers in the way you're putting on this double subscription if that is the case. And that's why I would say most console games does not have a subscription based model. But that's also something that we might cover into the future, right? It's something that needs to be kept in mind. Now we have the third part. It's a DLC or new game. Because DLC is mostly, well, what you would say, money to develop. DLC takes money to develop. Because I just read, the, read this article, right, about a guy stating, or he was trying to argue for DLCs and microtransactions, or rather against the DLCs and microtransactions. And he was saying stuff like, oh, they're developing all of this content, and I want all of that content, but I don't want to buy it. And I was like, and how are they supposed to develop all the content if you don't pay for it, mate? Now, think about that for a while, because basically, like, DLC is something, you know, additional downloadable content. I would say additional downloadable content, because it's always added. But then also is the question, should it be a DLC or should it be a new game? I would say a DLC is just a way of playing the same game that you love. Take Breath of the Wild, for instance. Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, a game that I absolutely adore. It's like the best game of 2017, you know, in my opinion, on the Switch and on every console that I had the pleasure of playing on. Even though it was a Nintendo you know, exclusive title, so I obviously played it on the Nintendo Switch. However, then I, when I finished the game, I finished like... I didn't finish everything I was to do there, but like the, the reasonable things that say to do there in the game. I was just thinking, I want more of this game. I want something else. I want something more from this. And then they added the DLC season pass, and I was like, that's brilliant. I buy both of them, all three of them. Oh, how many there were? And that turned out great because DLC is basically giving me more of the same game, and I like that in a way. Depending on how the DLC is made, because some DLCs are like entirely new games, <coughs> Witcher 3, which is awesome by the way. Just keep up that work. And then some DLCs are, are, are not, and we should have name and shame, right? We're not that kind of channel. 
Anyway, so that's quite important. Then you have the new game as well. Well, let's say it's more of an expansion pack, right? It's more of a new game in itself than an expansion pack. You have, for instance, Destiny 2. Now, many people think that Destiny 2 is worse than Destiny 1. Why? Well, because Destiny 1, with all of its DLCs, right, were better than Destiny 2 was at launch because it had more content than its supposed to be predecessors, I'd say. No, the predecessor had more content than its successors, so to say, the Destiny 2, and that, well, it didn't fit well with people if we just leave it at that. But then this entire discussion comes in, that DLC costs money to develop too, otherwise it would just be part of the main game. Just servers as a way of enjoying the same game for a bit longer, if single player, might act like an expansion pack or for a multiplayer game. Yet again, if you look at World of Warcraft, we have had a plethora all the different expansion packs, but those are expansion packs you buy, you have a subscription base, and I would argue that the patches in between, right, are what's actually a DLC in the console world, so to say, or in many other gaming worlds. A DLC in World of Warcraft is just basically a patch. That's just my opinion, I don't know how they would argue that point back or forth, or if they for it or against it, but that's how I view it. The patches there are basically like DLC that you pay for with your subscription in order to you know, keep the game going, keep the subscribers entertained, keep the game people playing it. The other game coming into actually favoring paying or overplaying, or am I favoring playing or paying, playing, playing, or paying? You know, it's all of them piece, right? The last thing to go into here is free to play allows for new entries. And this is something that is quite important because I've seen uh, when I've tried to research this, many people saying, well, all games should be bought. That's the only good reason, right? That's the only argument we can make. Let's make everybody buy every single game, and then we can just throw out all the microtransactions, we make them all single player, and that's good to go. Now, obviously, there is a big market that you kind of neglect all of the multiplayer market out there that still wants, like, maybe microtransactions or free-to-play games or a subscription-based uh, uh, opportunity, but this, these people just said, like, oh, no, we'll take all that away is let's just have single player games. Now, even if that is the case, even if we throw away all of the other game modes and we just have single player games that you can buy, that still creates a problem. Why? Well, I would tell you, barrier of entry. Yes, barrier of entry, as Michael Porter so nicely, neatly stated it. Different ways of saying uh, barriers of entry, you can have different tastes, you can cost leadership, you can have all these different things that is making it harder to enter an industry. And when it comes to gaming, free to play is a rather accessible alternative. And it's better for the consumer that free to play exists because it and it, it allows for more entries, it allows for new ideas to enter the market without that big of a penalty. Because when you say you need to pay the game, you need to tell all of your consumers like, I don't believe enough in this game, you just, you know, release it on the market as is and then make you pay for it afterwards. I need to make you pay for it up front and then give it to you. Now that is good in some way, sometimes, often actually, I would argue, because you're actually paying for something and you're obviously receiving some amount of content sometimes is greater like in the witcher 3 sometimes it's a little bit little bit less than what you thought like no man's sky oh yeah that game is still a thing a meme thing i mean who cares it's a meme thing it's a meme thing right it's a meme thing but then you're looking at free-to-play market, and the free-to-play market, free-to-play business plan, the free-to-play model is actually quite good. As I said, it's accessible. It allows for these new entries, these new ideas, maybe these exper experimentative ideas that people would say, well, we can't put the price tag on this because no one would play it. We need to have it free-to-play at first, and then maybe say that that's our easy access, that's our early access. Maybe that's how we go about it. Maybe we say it that way. Maybe it's just a beta, beta form, and we get people to play it because it's free-to-play they don't have to pay an entry fee and uh, so yeah I would argue that free to play is a really good way of making business we can't just exclude it and say let's everybody pay for the game because that's not always the best alternative at least in my world and we're gonna smash down on all of these tomorrow mates because that was the last one the numero capture I hope that's correct no but it was the fourth one that we discussed here so whales maybe a subscription instead of you know not a subscription if you have a multiplayer game DLC or a new game hmm what should we take there and free to play is good because it allows for new entries and new alternatives new ideas more experimentation and that is in the end good for the consumer because it gives you more choice on what to play now these are things that we've gone through together with opportunity cost together with that actually you know in the free to play market and the buy to play market 
like it's paying or playing and playing or paying both are actually happening in both sides let's say of the industry and tomorrow we're actually gonna smash down I know I've said that for like three videos now but we're actually going to smash down tomorrow why well because I have pretty strict schedule of what is coming out after that. We're gonna do some book reviews because reading it's good for your mind mates. We're gonna do some uh, news reporting and then I'm basically back at my apartment so that's gonna be all fine and dandy and then I have like six or seven different things I want to talk about after that you know arguably if I don't come up with anything else that's the you know month schedule there so without any further ado may it sounds yet again like i'm going to get into something extremely huge and long but i'm not I promise you mates I promise you hope i don't get the migraine from this or the headache at least oh because then this wasn't going to be worth it but at least mates i hope that you enjoyed this i'm closing my eyes because pfft, the full enjoyment so to say but have a nice one mates and see you tomorrow with the smash i promise you this time right the smash favoring pain or playing or playing and repaying see you mates